I'm Dante Morrison, and welcome to the Dante Show. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to the Dante Show. Another round with your boy Dante Morrison and Masai Kick. Dana Dang, DNA. What's happening, y'all? Hey, so we're back, y'all. We took a break yesterday. I'm on vacation this week, but you know, I didn't want to go two days without seeing my folks. You know, so I am um back refreshed. You know, I've been napping and resting and you know, relaxing, but uh I am here for tonight because I'm excited about tonight's show and looking forward to having this conversation with tonight's guest. So you know what? We're gonna kick it off quick. I'm about to bow out. I'm gonna let my boy take over because it's time for the what? It's time for the Dana Drop. Uh, What up, good people? I hope everybody's in good spirits and good health during this time. Uh, again, thank you again for tuning into the Dante Show. We love you guys. Um, thank you for supporting us. Go and follow us on our YouTube page, the Dante Morrison, uh, the Dante Show, backslash Dante Morrison, and push, boop, subscribe. So today we're going to talk about self-care, five reasons why self-care is important, all right? Self-care reduces stress levels, all right? What that means is by taking a few moments to yourself each day, you can allow yourself to be more productive as well as produce higher quality of work. <clears throat> this is because stress has a negative effect on both your mind and your body, hindering uh, quantity and quality of work. So take a little time for yourself um, and self-care. It reduces stress. Number two, self-care also prevents people from giving up. Don't give up. Give yourself some self-care. Sometimes you have to just step back and woo-sigh. Because in today's society, people are praised and judged on how they multitask. We see multitasking as an increasing efficiency, but taking too many tasks on at once increases stress and, and anxi anxiety. It also tries, it also tires out your brain and your body because you're pushing yourself either too hard or beyond your limits. Another way to keep yourself from giving up is to challenge negative self-tasks. Challenge negative self-talk as well. Self-talk is our inner voice of consciousness and unconsciousness thoughts. Instead of telling yourself that it is pointless to study for the test because you're going to fail anyway, you should tell yourself that if you study, you are less likely to fail and that you can achieve a great goal without studying and studying, making that the determination. Number three, self-care aids maintaining focus and refocusing, okay? Taking breaks from stressful or difficult tasks reduces stress and anxiety, allowing you to perform better on your tasks when you turn when you return to them. So sometimes you have to get up and step away from that thing that you're constantly, constantly doing. Go take a walk. Go get you something to drink. Go get you something to eat. And then come back to it with a clear mind and a clear head. Then you can tackle that task and move on efficiently. Number four, self-care aids in the completion of daily work. Making sure you receive enough sleep is number one. Make sure you get enough sleep and the proper nutrition. Eat the right things. Eat some brain foods. Eat some foods that's going to keep you alert, keep you high and attentive. Drink a lot of water, not the sodas, not the fruit juices, not the punches. Drink some water. You, people don't understand how water cleanses your body. It cleanses your mind. It cleanses your spirit and it cleanses your soul. All right, number five. And the final one, self-care boosts personal happiness. It boosts your personal happiness. Eating, sleeping, maintaining, personal hygiene. Wash yourself up. Sometimes you have to, sometimes, you ever feel how feel, it, it really feels good after you take a nice shower? You just take a good shower and you just feel so refreshed. 
and you just feel like you want to just take on the world. Do these things. Take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anybody else. And never let anyone make you feel that self-care is being selfish. Self-care is not being selfish. You cannot pour anything from an empty cup. Remember that. You cannot pour into someone if you are empty. You cannot pour into someone's life if you're empty, okay? Take care of yourself first, then you'll be able to take care of others, all right? That's the Dana drop for the night, and I'm out. Peace. Good drop, fam. Good drop, exactly. Put on your oxygen mask first, then secure others. I love right. that. Right. The self care is so important, especially right now in the midst of all that's going on. You know, hey, and did you hear that The Rock and his whole family have tested positive for COVID? Yeah, you know, I heard that today. Yeah. yeah. When folks were, when we first were told the little kids couldn't catch COVID, now we're seeing little kids. His kids were two years old and four years old or something like that. Hey, Tasha. Hey, Shantae. Hey, 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 hey LaShawn. You know, we're seeing folks that um, we, little kids are contracting it. So the game has stepped up, you know, protect, 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 protect. And I'm sure this also goes into play when it comes to schools, you know. So um, it, it's a lot we got to figure out about how we're going to navigate around this pandemic. But um, right. the COVID show, y'all, we're going to shift it real quick. Our special guest, you know, Mr. Dwayne Finley, you know, um, I'm amped to have him on here because not only is he an actor, but he is also an entrepreneur. He owns a black business in Los Angeles called My Mailbox LA. Um, and he's really all about it. And I, I really appreciate this dude because just seeing him just navigate all these different fields of, of, of diversity and who he is, you know, to be on the show tonight, um, he squeezed us in because he is now on location in Minneapolis um, filming another movie. So listen, for those who may not know who Dwayne Finley is, we got something for you. So I'm gonna ask the phenomenal producer Kwame Corbett, you know, kick up the reel and go ahead and push play. Let the folks know who Dwayne Finley is here it is bam boo yeah 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 i'm not anymore but some days i sit and wish yo here go the refreshments right here uh, tic tacs <laughs> hey no 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 hold up man yo good idea bad choice of flavor though yeah all right what's wrong with orange school man i got this look with tic tacs they're always a good choice Cause they're small and they pack a lot of power. Yeah, you want to remember, always go small because uh, you might be talking to a fine ass freak and the candy fall out your mouth. <laughs> man, you look stupid. Yo, and that shit counts, man. See, with Tic Tacs, they small. So even if they fall out, they hard to notice, especially in the dance, right? Yeah, yeah, hey, man. Oh. The, the leave, the leave. <laughs> <laughs> so now we know who Dwayne is. Get your Jerry Curls ready. Get your favorite drink. Welcome to the Dante Show, Dwayne Finley. Let's go. Go. Yo. What's up, fellas? What's, What's going on, D? Hey, same old shit. Hard work, more of it. You cut the girl. <laughs> Yeah, I went to the barbershop out here in Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, welcome to the Dante Show. We appreciate you taking some time out um, to do this. Hey, let the folks know where you at right now. What's going on? What you working on? Uh, thanks for having me. Um, right now, I'm in Minnesota, Minneapolis, and I'm shooting um, a film based on the story of Philando Castile. So we are, you know, doing something socially about the culture with this film um and i've been out here uh just like three days we started shooting this in atlanta so i've moved around a little bit and now we're here in minnesota so um hopefully we'll get this done in the next week or so i'll start on another oh, project yeah. next week actually yeah man hey that's that's important right now i mean just thinking about you know we all know philando's story and doing a movie about it i mean unfortunately we got to do a movie about such a traumatic um event 
you know, how how have you been how have you been navigating through all of this civil unrest that we've all been experiencing? Um, it's a little surreal, you know. Um, being in business and then being in entertainment as well, there's a great responsibility um, for us as young black males to kind of, you know, guide the conversation as it goes. And I right. think sometimes we start the conversation in the wrong place. You know, we went around in circles and it becomes this hamster wheel. So um, for me, I've just navigated trying to be as present as possible. You know, with the big COVID thing, a lot of folks were trying to figure out how to get their unemployment. They were trying to figure out how to get the stimulus package um, if you have a small business or a 1099 employee. And that's that's what I've been on, man. I've been helping people file their taxes and, you know, best I can, you know, especially with my schedule and, and working and traveling and stuff. So. Right. That, and I think what most folks don't start doing, what most folks don't know, I mean, you're a jack of all trades. You know, people people see the, you know, they'll see the wood, you know, they'll see slim, and they'll lock you right there in that box. Right, exactly. You know, not realizing that you got so many things that you're working on. Um, and then being a black business owner, you know, in LA, you know, how is it how is it navigating all that stuff, you know, especially right now with all the lockdowns and shutdowns and whatnot? Oh, you make it sound like I do a lot, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've been always just been a man about my pivot you know you can't get um stuck in a certain place you always have to be a little more versatile and have a repertoire of things so yes i i do a lot of different businesses i try to tie into things that our community need so during this pandemic we became an essential business at my mailbox and as well with finn's live scan and notary public um you know that's become essential business as well and then we also do um integrity one tax service out of my office as well so just those things in particular, man, that's what everybody needed. So um, for me, I just, I got busy as soon as it happened. Like pandemic's the worst thing ever happened to the world, but it was great for business. Like people really right, needed right. stuff, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I was just, I was putting out commercials and things, just imploring people to come in, get your taxes done. If you need help with stimulus package, holler at me, or even you want to sit down and figure out how to start an LLC, a DBA, a corporation. You know, I was trying to help with that. Uh, just doing my part. I'm not the big protester, uh, you know. I protest in other ways, but I'm, you know, wasn't really street marching and things of that nature. But especially with the COVID, um, you know, and having a 12 year old son that I'm trying to push through this whole agenda as well. Right. So with him being at school, that just added another job to my plate because <laughs> he's doing yeah. virtual school. <laughs> it's like, damn. Right. Right. And that was, uh, was going to be a question of mine. Um, how were you? being active with the protesting, being the platform that you have, you answered that. Um, and then where you are right now, how is the atmosphere out there? How is, uh, how is, the, how, how is the, uh, how is the city? This is, a, this is a little strange out here, man. It's, um, they just finished like having a protest here, like the day before I got here. So the whole city was just pretty much on lockdown before we got here. And now they've, they've opened it back up, but a lot of the city still shut down due to the COVID thing. And it's very sensitive um, in regards to the shootings by the police out here. Like they're, we're at the state's building right now shooting and uh, you know, the police keep riding around talking to us and that kind of thing. But it's, it's pretty tense out here, man. Like yeah. it really is. And um, you know, like I said, with the protesting thing, that, that wasn't something that I, I thought I should be out doing, but I did take my son to kind of go see what it looked like and be a part of it and participate that way um, mm -hmm. but other than that man I, yeah being out here is just it's it's surreal especially like meeting people that knew him and right. having to actually be in the role where i'm in the car being shot and by a police officer so it's you know those moments took some time to get over get through it but, uh, yeah. yeah i mean honestly i i implore people to, to seek therapy during this time i have you know virtually made phone calls just to talk to somebody in partial parties to kind of understand like hey you're not crazy we're all going through this together and, right you know i implore mental health is great like you said man you got to take care of yourself first so you know you can't pour into somebody else without having everything you need inside so that's what right. i've been on man just trying to keep my mental strength and pursuing what i can yeah you know i'm curious as a you know as a black father you know your son is 12 you know um and and he's being exposed to this you know he's he's seeing all of this um unlike our you know we were younger you know we didn't have social media 
you know, we would hear about stuff. You know, all we saw the Rodney King beating, you know, and right. that was supported, you know, over the hill by a Betamax camera, you know, all that kind of stuff. But we're seeing stuff now live action. And you talk about Philando, like we literally watched that happen. Um, then you have a son who is seeing all of this and young black man. How are you educating him about the system and, and the injustice? And even when it comes to police interaction, you know, what is your message as a father to your son? Well, real quick, to teach real quick before you answer that, could I add on to your question, Dante? Yeah, go ahead. Um, how and also to add on to Dante's question, how are you preparing them mentally for your role that you're getting ready to play as well? Because he's going to see that too. Yeah. All um, in that. You know, yeah. Raising a 12 year old, a young black male in Los Angeles, um, it's not easy. You try to try to curb him from certain things, but then you don't want him to. To, to be naive when he gets to that situation. So I'm pretty open with my son as it goes to conversations, hence taking him out to see the protest. You know, they kids live in a bubble now. They play Fortnite all day and that kind of thing. But, right. you know, when you pull him away from the computer screen and I show him the work that I do, I show him when I'm producing projects, I take him to movie premieres, you know, things that I'm in. So he understands that dad is working and portraying, you know, the human experience in stories. He doesn't want to really be an actor, but also teaching him about like economics and how things work being an entrepreneur i didn't have the luxury of just waking up telling them i got a nine to five so it was like nah i gotta go to work and i work a lot i'm in there i'm early i'm you know sometimes i'm in i'm off some days but he sees the entrepreneurial level of things so teaching him that like hey you're not a worker bee. you can either go and be an employee or you can have a hundred employees i like the fact that he's choosing the lab and you know i try to keep him and his mind occupied so he mm -hmm. plays instruments he's he's an artist he does he draws he does all types of stuff and just trying to encourage him to stay in a creative lane because i think that's the only reason i'm successful in business honestly it's not like we figured out some strange matrix or something we just have great customer service and we're listening to the client like what do you need what adds right. to you so it's it's teaching him that like people are people you know whether he's a police officer or whatever we got officers in our family so teaching him that hey these are just people and you got to realize when people are telling you things you know power corrupts absolutely so when you start to talk to a police officer he's already in a position of power and you have to give mm -hmm. them that respect i teach my son how to be country dumb be the smartest man in the room you don't always have to be talking so right. it's, it's you know what i'm saying it's like he's got to learn the chess moves versus, you know, playing right. checkers. And, right. and that's, I'm, I'm constant with that. The little things, giving him $2, asking him how much change he's getting back before he gets the change back, like trying to make him quicker on those things. So mm -hmm. with me, I just, I do the best I can, you know, in, in trying to raise him. And, you know, his mom right. and I we, we do a pretty good job in piggybacking that. But I'm, you know, I'm a single dad. So as it goes, like, it's no mistakes that he can make. It's like, hey, everybody's not going to give you a second chance. And right. I try to be as strict as I can on that, man, trying to teach them real world stuff. But he's, he's, I think these kids, man, they understand a lot more about what's going on. I mean, we're dealing with a new generation of kids. They're not, they're not scared of this stuff, man. They don't even, like, racism to a kid is like, what? Like, why? That's my <laughs> friend right here. Right. You know what I'm right. Like, they don't get it. So this is like, BS stuff that people have taught their children and it's just continued this bull cycle that we keep going through. And I'm gonna make sure that my son's not a part of it. Like he can he can somehow step outside of it and say, you know what, this this ain't right. Now let's just figure it out. Do one to others as you want them to do on golden rule. So that's that's my my stake on trying to raise a kid. Hey, there's books on it, you can read yours, <laughs> do what you do. No. <laughs> You know, no, that's solid because we oftentimes we don't hear from um we don't hear from black fathers. You know, um, I know Dana's a black father, you're a black father. I see um, you know, Eric Daniels on here, he's a black father, you know, that 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 are in this season when they have these young black men that they're trying to raise. It's like how do you navigate them when they're surrounded by um you know, just messages that the police hate you, you know, the black man is you know got a target on his back and all of that, and you don't want to you know, put so much pressure on a child that they miss growing up. You know, they yeah. miss the fun of it, you know, yeah. um, because they got to be so responsible so young. I you think know. that's the, the, the hefty balance. You know, we're raising leaders. 
So it's never easy, bro. Like, you know, I lost my childhood long time ago. Didn't even know what was happening. And growing right. up in L.A., we saw some things that we shouldn't have. And I will say my son has not had that same experience as I have growing up looking at gangs, watching people get shot and killed and go to jail forever. You know, those right. were those were the elements. And I tell kids all the time, it's like, look, we have to think about it as parents. If we constantly put our kids in situations like we were put in, where you're walking by 10 liquor stores before you get to the candy store, more than likely they're going to wind up turning into the liquor store and following the same cycle. So right. we just have to, I'm very conscious of where we are, especially in the neighborhood that we're in. Dante, you know, Dante, I see you all the time, but you know, in the mm-hmm. neighborhood we're in, we got to be, keep your head on the swivel. We got to be slick. We, a lot of us, are still dealing with mental issues, are still dealing with um, substance abuse issues. And as I walk with my kid having conversation, trying to teach him out of, in his adolescence, we're walking right past those people. And they right. know me and we speak and it's X, Y, and Z, but there's a certain level of respect that, you know, we garner with each other. And right. I think my son sees that. So it's not necessarily like he'll be worried about it. You know, I hope, yeah. I pray. Yeah. <laughs> and, and speaking of speaking of growing up, I mean, The Wood is is iconic. You know, that's an <laughs> iconic black film. You know, we got Boys in the Hood, Men's Society, you know, The Wood. Yeah. You know, um, the Wood. and I know that The Wood was based upon the, the true life of, of the three characters that you portray, right? Yeah, it was. It was. Based upon was. Their, they're going up loosely based or whatever. But did you guys expect for The Wood to be as big as it was or is? Mm. You know, no, I mean, not at all. Not at all. That was my first film, man, and my first audition, actually. And um, when I booked that role, man, I didn't. It was I didn't believe I booked it. Like I was like, what? You know. And next thing I know, man, I'm shooting at Paramount Studios in Hollywood. Where, you know, it was a big deal. I met John Singleton on that set. You know what I mean? So yeah. It was like one of those. And the weird part, the director I'm working with now, uh, Mark Casey, I met him on that set 22 years ago. So it's um. It's surreal. It's like full circle right now. You got people walking up on me like, hey, man, Slam, Lavinio, whatever. We take a picture. Right. <laughs> Lavinio, yep. like, yeah. And my son basically has grown up watching that happen to me. Like people stop uh-huh. me all the time in L.A. And so it's it was for me, man. I didn't expect that to happen. I didn't know what that film was going to be. Like I said, it was my first movie. So it was, it was a great time doing it. I had a great time doing it. Some of those guys are still my best friends to today. Still talk. But uh, I did not expect that to be such a cult classic, man. Like, what's yeah, man. And I think because a lot of it has to do with the fact that that it was so realistically depicted. You know, like, you know, I grew up in Carson, but my mom lived in Inglewood. My sister went to Inglewood High. You know, so mm-hmm. I all of every every facet of the storyline, I knew where all the filming was. You know, Crozier Middle School, just all that kind of stuff. And then the I think what I liked was the it put a funny spin on the gang life mm-hmm. you know, it, it talked about bloods and all that but it showed that human side especially when old boy was crying you know yeah, after the police they got him and they crying, get <laughs> and he crying it's like man you sit in the back because the, i mean real talk all gangsters ain't hard you know it's just a part of the environment you know it's like well i gotta suit up i gotta be a part of this because this is where i live you know um that's not it and you know folks you know twice just cut hey miss hughes what page 15 on you know it's like stuff like that to show growing up one black you know <laughs> going to a black school and then even the funny games about hey go go smack her booty you know I can, <laughs> and then the, the 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 jar about losing your virginity and just all everything was about growing up you know right. You know, I think that um, if, if somebody like recreated the wood right now in modern times, it would be just as relevant, just as funny, you know, right now. But what, what what was your takeaway from that, from just portraying that character? I mean, what did you what did you gravitate most about with Slim? Oh, besides the money? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Slim was me, man. They like they when I met Rick Palmer, you were the director of that. He. I was I was green. I just went in an improv and he hired me along with, you know, two other actors. These were child actors. You had seen Sean Nelson and Fresh. You had seen Trent Cameron and the kid that loves Christmas right inside Denzel and Loretta Devine. So it was these guys had already, you know, they had some chops. So when I went into the room, man, they just they allowed me to be me. Like he allowed me to put the script down and kind of ad lib and throw some lines in and 
you know, do a whole bunch of improv type of stuff. So in that, when you see the, the jar and I push the boys down and we run off, you know, that, those are all just us playing. And he just he wound up keeping a lot of the real stuff in it. So I don't know how he did it or or why he even took the chance on me to be a part of that film. But, they, you know, when he put that Jerry Curl wig on me, I came to life. And it was it was that from then on. I just I am by all I could think about was doing spins and splits and you know, just dancing and playing fingers. I, man, that Jerry Curl wig is what did it. And yeah. it just um, it, it allowed me to be free, man, and just change that whole character into somebody we all know, the homeboy that everybody had. And uh, yeah. right. that was it. You know, what, uh, what made you what made you say, did you just wake up one day because you did that role young? What made you want to get into acting? What what inspired you? Who or who inspired you? Honestly, it, it came from a couple of sources. Um, my uncle, K. Todd Freeman, is a you know he's a world renowned actor. He's been doing theater and TV and movies for you know since I can remember. But he's also he never really like tried to get me into acting. He was just the guy I'd sit down and watch old black and white movies and eat sunflower seeds with. And then just so mm -hmm. happened to see him on Broadway. Was like, right. oh, you know, that was wow. That's my, you know. <laughs> then right. I was a teacher at Inglewood High School because I, I graduated from Inglewood High. So my drama teacher was my English teacher at Inglewood High School, Chazelle Manning. And uh, piece of Chazelle, I don't know where she is in the world right now, but she actually took me to that first audition. She took me and about eight other students from that class. And if it wasn't for her, I never would have seen the light of day of a screen. You know, I never would have done that. So those are the two influences for me. Like she had taught me improv inside of her class. And my uncle just kind of introduced me to the game by being such a phenomenal actor himself. Okay. And uh, I don't know. This, that's just the way God works, man. You get all right. these bits and pieces and breadcrumbs and then boom. It's come together. Guy. Yeah. And then now, and then so from, from acting, you know, I guess that entrepreneurial spirit hit. I love how you said you can either work for a hundred or, you know, be the, you know, on your thing, you know, cause so my mailbox, you know, in LA, talk talk about that. How did that come up come about? Well, my mailbox is on the brand Coliseum in Los Angeles. We've been there for 22 years. Basically, after I did the wood, my dad and I and my brother decided, okay, let's do something with this. Right before I went away to college, most people don't know I took a long break from acting. I hadn't, you know, I did the wood and then I kind of took I took off. I wasn't even nowhere to be found. No auditions, no nothing. So. Um, the business is what really I delved into, especially because I was in college. My dad was always like, hey, we come back here for the summer. We got this business. Let's do this. Let's do this. So we wound up doing it. And he passed about 10 years ago. My brother and I took the business over. So after college, that was that's all I knew was doing my mailbox. It was at my mailbox inside of my business where I ran into, um, and rest in peace right now, but I ran into a, direct, a writer and director named Michael Ajakwe. Michael Ajakwe was a writer on The Martin Show, and he was doing a, um, a pilot. He was putting his own money up and doing a pilot, and he hired me to come do the pilot. That was my next acting job after the wood, basically. And it all came from me just due diligence, dealing with my family, having my business, and it just fell in my lap. So one day I just decided to be an actor again. And okay. like, hey, so I started to pursue it. And now, you know, you see me in films, you got a couple pictures on Amazon. I think one's called uh, Prayer of a Fighter. It used to be called Hogan or something. Oh, Hogan, yeah. Not a stellar project, but yeah. <laughs> so it's out there. Hey. Uh, hey, you know. uh, then I got a couple other things on Amazon. I did a comedy special. I jumped into doing comedy. Um, you know, so a friend of mine, Antonio Gillings, Barbara over at, you know, you know, Antonio. So he pulled me into a stage one day, and, you know, there it went. So it's just like these little pieces, these people, you know, these angels. Right. About them. Like, I ain't nothing without my homeboys, really. So it's like, it all comes together, man. Even now, out here shooting this, it's all a blessing. I, I could yeah, check, somebody you know, just commented, hey, it's a check, you know. It's a check. Tell them or not, it's a check, you know. <laughs> You know, I want to just um, real quick. I know you on set and all that. You know, just real quick. When it comes to my mailbox, and you talked about, you know, uh, you, the notary services, and you know, just all this kind of stuff. And you know, within the black community, it's few and far between services like that that are black owned. You know, when it comes to just 
providing that kind of legal assistance and guidance and whatever. I mean, literally, I go to my mailbox to mail out my books, my T-shirts, all that kind of stuff. We're in the same plaza, you know, where I work. But I had never seen black people own something like that. You know, yeah. so when it when it comes to to my mailbox and all that you guys offer, how are you guys faring? I know you said you're an essential service, but were you ever nervous when COVID hit and, and all this stuff was going on? Did it ever bother you because you being a black business owner? Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, I think right now this COVID thing, is if you are an essential business, it actually puts much more of a microscope onto your business. So not only is the state telling you, hey, you know, you can be open. They're like, you got to be open, but you got to do this, 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 and this. They'll send the health department to the business. They'll make if right, somebody standing in there without a mask on. They'll shut it down. You know what I'm saying? So it's even more hectic on how we have to stick to the letter of the law. Mm -hmm. And with us, we are an essential business to the community, regardless of this COVID thing. There's a lot of people in our community where there's a disconnect between literacy of computers, literacy period, uh, you know, right. and we are that buffer as it goes. So when grandma don't know how to get that picture out of her phone, she comes to see us. Somebody gets that email, they don't know how to print it or how to sign it or send it back, they come see me. And I'm certified as a notary public and a tax preparer, and I'm one of the only black live scan fingerprinters in Los Angeles. There aren't very many of them. So it's, and that's, you know, that's important to to bring up because we got some wind noise. Uh, the window open, door open, door open. That's important to acknowledge because because like when I go into my mailbox, you know, I see a lot of folks in there. They have their their packets and stuff. They got to be faxed off somewhere because you you know, in my mind, I'm like, who still takes faxes? Who still wants a fax? I can just email it to you, but people need their stuff fast. I see people sitting at the computer trying to figure stuff out because we just don't realize it's a lot of folks out there that just don't have that at home. They don't have a computer at home. You know, they don't have access to a fax machine through their job or whatever. So I just notice when I go, you know, how much you guys provide for the community. And, and I want to ask you, do you get are people taking full advantage of just your expertise when it comes to forming an LLC or businesses and all that? Because I know that black people, we always talk about doing it. But then if I say, hey, well, I know somebody. Yeah, not right now. You know, so how are you, how are you seeing the uptake of your services by us? Um, there's been a, quite a few people that have, have gotten at me to say, hey, how did you do the LLC? How do you do the business stuff? Like, I was very open about, hey, I got this PPP loan money. Hey, I got this other disaster loan money. You can be getting the same. So it was it was a lot of folks did hit me up about that. A lot of people hit me up to get their stuff notarized to start their LLCs and DBAs. Um, a lot of us don't know when to utilize my business. So I just try to stay as visual as, you know open as possible so people can see me i i incorporate that on my my instagram page a lot to, to implore people to come in ask me questions hit me in my dms i respond so it, it does it has picked up a lot i think now you know folks are starting to figure it out like hey my job quit i it went away what do i do now right. and you know the only other people hiring was uber and lyft you know what i mean so you're putting yourself at risk on people in the back of your car Mm -hmm. I just try to give people other options. They don't realize it's an entrepreneurship to be a, a notary public. It's just a certification with the state. Most people can do it. You know, right. if you don't have any felonies. You can be working for yourself. I tell kids all the time, hey, I'm a, I'm a professional snitch for the state of California. I tell on anybody for $15 per signature. You know what I'm saying? Like people, just to catch their attention, nobody understands what a notary right. is until you need one. You know, it's not like a sexy job. You know, what I'm it's like, right, but it's needed. It's definitely it's needed. needed. But then I can break it down for folks. Like, hey, man, you work when you want to. You travel. You promote yourself. Get your own business cards. You actually make more money going to people's houses, doing loan documents, that kind of stuff. So I try to right. make it attractive to folks on what I do, so maybe it'll spark them to want to do exactly what they want to do. And maybe mm -hmm. what I do isn't that. You know, that's not what they need to be doing. But either way, I, I just try to be transparent about it. You know, yeah, I'm an actor. You see me on set now, but you know. My bread and butter comes from owning businesses and having business. And uh, have, you ever, um, have you ever thought about doing like any um, like entrepreneurship classes, especially now during this time with the uh, um, virtual classes, teaching classes? 
Yeah, actually, um, before this COVID thing hit, I was actually gearing up to start teaching notary classes and, and you know, allowing people to get the six hour training through me and, and having test, pro test proctors come out. Um, as it goes, I have been asked to kind of teach an acting class, also to teach an entrepreneurship class to some kids. So that stuff's coming. Um, again, I've, you know, I'm, I love what I do. I'm an actor. So literally when a job calls, I drop it all and go do the job right. and, then, you know, get back to it. But that's definitely on the rise. I definitely want to start to spread the word to more children. I would actually like to teach high school kids about to be age 18 how to do taxes. I think that the biggest thing that we don't think about is as, as people, we get out of high school. Most folks don't have, you know, the skill set to go and do their own taxes or to do anything to kind of like, you know, help themselves with any types of certifications. When you think about it, um, you only got to be 18 to be certified to do it. And you only got to be 18 to be a notary too. So back in the day, people used to go to school and get certified for stuff. Like you would graduate high school and be right. a plumber and be a certified electrician or even a notary. Nowadays, right. that stuff's been taken out of the schools. They don't do yeah, it that exactly. way. Anymore. So we got to start teaching our kids right now not to keep going to school to get a job. Like that's the process. That's the weird... You know what they say um playground to the prison system shit they talk about yeah we need, yeah yeah we got to get out of that and and then try to keep teach people to think you know rationally think about it like hey you got some money to open up a business do you really go open up a weave shop a hair salon you know these are luxury items these are luxury things people don't think about like right now you can't go get your hair done everywhere you can't get your nails right. done everywhere and a lot of those businesses are gone and shut down you know yeah. so exactly we have to be smarter in what we're bringing to our community. We need to start bringing more essential businesses similar to my mailbox. I'm even looking at franchising. You know, every state that I go to, I got a friend out there I'm talking to about, hey, maybe we could pop one up in this community. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like these mm -hmm. things, you know, that's the goal, man. Like what else are we here for? We get the knowledge and we share it. Otherwise. Right. Right. I love when, you gone, when you gone is gone with you, if you don't share it. Yeah. Exactly. Right. exactly. We got a question for you. Tony Ross wants to know, is it something that you won't do when it comes to being an actor? Um, yeah, actually, you know, I won't go down a list of things, but as a, as an actor at this level and stage of my career, there's a lot of stuff that I want to do. And there's a lot of, I'm not sitting up turning down a lot of things, but at the same time, there's some stuff that I feel like, you know, I have to be accountable for when I'm in the street, when I'm dealing with people, when I'm at my business. So there's some things I won't do. You know what I mean? Like there's, I don't want to be that guy that people run up on and be like, hey, man, that's the dude from that movie. Man, I hate you. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, you don't want to be, right. you don't want to be Tariq from Power. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you just took the words out of my mouth, dude. You just right. took the words out of my mouth. Yeah, yeah. 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 Tariq is the one of the screen. Yeah. No, I love that. I love yeah. that. And then my girl, Nadia Hawk, she teaches at um, Duke Ellington Continuation which is um, by Washington High School. And she's like, yo, can you come to Duke Ellington and just talk to her kids? You know, I go over there um, and do workshops with them as well. But I think what you just put out there talking about those different options and how to, um, you know, how kids got to see what's available. Because unfortunately right now in high school, you're, they're told go to college or don't be a success. You right. know, and college right. does not equate to success. You know, college equates to debt. <laughs> you know, yeah. oftentimes. And if you're not a college type of kid, you know, you're not gonna survive in college. You're just not. Yeah. But they, we have a lot of trades out there, certifications out there. It's like it's like blue collar workers get frowned upon nowadays. I don't know why that happened, but a lot of blue collar workers make more than doctors. You know, you blue collar the right way. And then you talk about entrepreneurship, you know, and Duke Ellington is a continuation school. It's like, you know, continuation. You from the hood, Dwayne, you know, so, yeah, I mean, are you open to like going to schools and talking to kids and and motivating kids and showing them the different you know choices they do have? Well, yeah, I mean, um, I guess I was I was biased because I was always doing it at my son's school, so I would always volunteer over at Baldwin Hills or you know wherever he's at school. But um, yeah, I'm open to doing that. So if there's something Duke Ellington, just reach out, Dante. Dante, I, it's not a problem. Not at all. For sure. We'll make that happen. All right. So last thing, what's up for you? What's in the future? What's coming on the pipeline? We know you, you know, you're on set right now filming this movie. You know, you're going to play Philando Castile. You know, we're going to see that come out. But after this, I'm sure you're on to another set. So what's the store for Dwayne Finley? What, what we can look out for? Well, Dwayne's got a lot of projects actually in the fire right now. Just finished shooting three projects in the last couple of months. 
So you'll start to see those things get released. Also, I've got this other thing out right now with um, called Urban Flicks called Pump. And that's something I did with Ray J and Jennifer Freeman. So it's, uh, it's, it's a few projects. You'll start seeing my face pop up in different things, man. I'm out here working on this Philando Castile story. I'm also producing another project in Atlanta. So there'll be some, there'll be some Dwayne for 2021. That's for sure. I'm out here. And then uh, business, up. man. It's trying to franchise, brother. I'm going to open up my second one sometime soon. So we're working on it. Hey, that. that's what's up, man. Hey, you should do a movie about a guy who joined the Navy and became a spoken word artist. No, let me my write this down. He's on here. <laughs> he's on here. He's uh, been on my show a few times. He, he, man, he's a phenomenal spoken word artist. He just put on there, you need a spoken word artist for one of the movies? I'm just saying. Yeah, do it yeah, first. It'll be a hit. <laughs> but, if, but, if you, but if you do it, Dwayne, you got to film it in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Steeler Nation. Film it in if you I see that behind you, I was wondering if you just see the man. <laughs> Real talk. Hey, man, hey, be, be safe out there in them streets, man. Um, Good work that you're doing. I can't wait to see how you guys frame, you know, Philando's story. It's an important it's an important uh, talk, important dialogue. Looking forward to seeing it, man. Hey, keep being a good father, you know, motivator, influencer. We, we appreciate that, man. We appreciate it. Man, I appreciate you, brother. We need avenues like this, man. So anything I can do, Dave, just let me know, brother. Most deaf, man. Most deaf. All right, y'all, give it up for give it up for Slim. Girl. <laughs> Girl. Girl. <laughs> All right, give it up for Dwayne Philly, y'all. Thanks for being a guest, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> man, I appreciate you, brothers, man. Y'all be safe. You Appreciate too. Up. Be safe Thank out you. there, man. That was inspirational, man. That was inspirational. I love, I love him talking about just being a father raising his son. You know, that's so important to hear from black dads, you know, yeah. to let the world know. Hey, black fathers are out there, they're concerned, they're involved. You know, it's it's real talk. So, yes, sir. Dana. Yes, sir. Man, closing comments, bro. What? Yes, sir. We did that. <laughs> what? You know who happy backstage? Who's probably dancing around? Right. Dancing around with spear fingers. Spear fingers. <laughs> <laughs> we hey. love you, Kwame. Oh, yes, we do. Took me out. He took me out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, man, you know how it is, man. You know what I say, how we end the show every night. We have to spread love. Instead of spreading lies. We have to spread love. Instead of spreading love. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> you added that little, uh, you felt the spirit on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You didn't quench that joint. Uh -uh. Thank you guys so much for watching tonight. We love you guys. Remember during this time, reach out to somebody, check on them. Make sure they're doing good. Make sure that they're in good spirits. Even if you think they're doing good, pick up the phone, shoot a text, let them know you're thinking about them, say hi, how you doing? And when you act how they're doing, mean it, mean it, mean it, mean it, mean it. That's right, Christine, black and yellow. Again, spread love, spread love. Let people know that you love them and you're thinking about them, all right? Thank you, guys. Hey, y'all, and quick question for me. Since I got like two minutes to do this. So listen, 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 listen. So there was a, there was this debate I was on before this show started, all right? So I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to ask this question. And this is not about anybody's personal life or what they did or all this kind of stuff. This is about artistry, okay? Artistry. So, you know, everybody's talking about versus battles, versus battles, versus battles. So someone that I, I love dearly said if there was a versus battle between Joe, who I believe can sing down, and R. Kelly, Joe would win. Everything you know about R. Kelly's personal life aside, artistry and talent and, and musicianship, Joe versus R. Kelly, Dana, who you got? Well, we're not going off the singing. We're going off the hits. That's yeah, what these yeah. verses, the yeah. verses, the verses aren't going off of talent. They're going off the the records. Exactly. So I would, I got, I love Joe. He's one of my inspirations. But 
off of hits, I'm going with R. Kelly. It's it's uh, <laughs> duh. <laughs> Joe just said it. Ain't nobody ain't nobody beating Kells. Nobody. Joe would be annihilated. Joe Joe can go against Cheek on the barge. No, I, I, not this the one. This would be the one. Keith Sweat and R. Kelly. Now those are hits. Those both, are hits. Both of them. Okay, come I, okay, okay that's that's a good one. one. But hits. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, R. So Kelly. Yeah. R. Kelly, call on your collect call, <laughs> and we're gonna get Keith Sweat and R. Kelly going at each other for hits. Cause and, and, and and Robert, say, all you gotta do is push play. You ain't gotta yeah. say it or nothing, but just push play. But but yeah, I think Joe and Chico can go against each other. I mean, Chico the barge, Joe, all right, bet. You know, but uh, you know, some of y'all say Joe, cool, go with it. Hey, it's not my zhuzh. <laughs> I don't think so, but I just had to get that out there. I had to get that out there. All right. Also, lastly, listen, people, please, if nothing else, please register to vote. All right, yeah, register please. to vote. And don't just register, but actually cast your ballot. All right, cast your ballot. I don't care who you vote for. I do, but I'm not going to be biased. I don't care who you vote for, but just cash your ballot because you can guarantee that the person that you don't support, their squad is beat and they're going to vote. All right. So please register to vote and then vote. All right, Kwame, I'm ready. Here we go. So go. I am Dante Morrison, host of the Dante Show, but I'm more than that. I'm also an author. I have two books out. The first one is The End of the Rainbow and it's My Life in My 20s, followed by the sequel, Yesterday Clarify, which puts everything into a nice, healthy little bow. I would love your support. Buy my books. You can purchase them on Amazon.com or you can visit my website. Visit my website. Go to my website and then just check out all the other stuff that I do, the advocacy, the Dante show, the blogs that I wrote, the shows I've been on, how I've been interviewed and all that kind of stuff. Just check it all out. Check it all out. All right. So you can also subscribe to us on YouTube. Go to YouTube backslash Dante Morrison. Please subscribe to the Dante show. It costs you nothing. It costs you nothing to, to subscribe. Just click subscribe. You'll be notified every single time we go live. You can also see all the past episodes that we did. And we've had some very solid episodes that you really would learn a lot from. So check out the Dante show on YouTube and just be a part of the village. All right. You can also get your very own The Dante Show or Black Lives Matter t-shirt. Just inbox me. Inbox me and place your order. You can inbox me. I will ship it out to you. I will go to my mailbox. <laughs> I'll go to my mailbox and ship it out. So everyone that's gotten a Dante Show t-shirt thus far, it's shipped from my mailbox, a black-owned postal annex. All right? Period. Boom, bang, bang. Bow. All right, for those that are feeling cold outside, make sure that you um grab your jackets. Oh, my bad. There's no show on Monday. It's Labor Day. Turn up, but turn up safely with the mask on, with people that you know. Check their temperatures. Matter of fact, turn up alone. You don't know nobody nowadays. The Rocks kids have COVID. They're two and four. All right, turn up by yourself. All right, grill your own grill. One rib. Just grill one rib. That's all you need. Turn up alone. <laughs> Yeah, solo bolo, period. All right, no show on Monday. Grab your burgundy sweater and just sit outside in the heat. Eat that one rib and enjoy your labor day. All right? All right, so that's it for tonight's episode of The Dante Show. We appreciate y'all for watching. We love y'all dearly. Like I said, register to vote, register to vote, register to vote. Oh. Right. For those that are interested in getting a show similar to The Dante Show, please visit pyromedianetwork.com. Pyromedianetwork.com is responsible for all the visuals and the aesthetic that you see for the Dante show, all right? If you want to have a show like this, you can get a free consultation with Kwame Corbett. Visit pyromedianetwork.com. He will walk you through the processes. Maybe you don't want to have a show on Facebook Live. Maybe you want an Instagram show. Maybe you just want to have a podcast, which is only your voice. You have options. He also can do special events. Maybe you got a special presentation coming up. You want to do a commercial. You even want a photo shoot, whatever. Pyro Media can handle all of your needs. Wow. If you want to be a guest on the Dante Show, just visit pyromedianetwork.com. Find the Dante Show and click booking. And you can book yourself to be a guest on the Dante Show. You know that we air Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We love all content as long as it makes sense. All right. We are not a regular pop culture show. We bring educated dialogue to the black community to strengthen us as a village. So if you want to strengthen, come on and be a guest on the Dante show. All right, y'all. Yeah, so we right. 
We will see y'all on Tuesday of next week. So be safe until then. Once again, grill that one rib and be solo bolo. Better safe than sorry because you don't know anybody. All right? Nobody. Nobody. Right. Nobody. Nobody. That's for you, Joe. Nobody. <laughs> Kwame, take us out, fam. Thank <laughs> you.